Rogers Radio Show. Yes, folks, it's the Roy Rogers Radio Show for the whole family. Adventure, suspense, mystery, and music. Starring Roy Rogers, King of the Cowboys, and Dale Evans, Queen of the West, with Pat Brady, the Mellow Man, and an all-star cast. And now, here to greet you with a song and a story are Roy and Dale. Yes, it's a good day for singing a song, and it's a good day for moving along. Yes, it's a good day. How could anything go wrong? A good day from morning till night. Well, good evening, folks. Greetings again to the whole family. It's a good day. Yes, sir, it has been a good day for us, and we hope it's been a good day for you folks, too. However, I can remember a while back when it wasn't a good day at all. At least not for a friend of ours. It began the day after Dale and Pat and I had returned to the Double R Bar Ranch from a personal appearance tour. Just before lunch, we had a visitor, Jack Kelly, an investigator for an insurance company. Hi, y'all. Well, Hi. Jack, good to see you again. Sit down. Thanks. We're having lunch in a minute. I'll put on an extra plate. Uh, thanks, Dale. But I'm afraid I didn't come on a social call. I have to get right back to the office. Oh? The fact of the matter is, I'm on a case that involves a friend of yours. The claimant gave you as a reference when we insured the jewelry. Who's that? Mrs. William Haley. Janet? Mm. Oh, sure. We've known Janet for a long time. Yes, you have. Hi, Janet, Jack. I'm not too good at this moment, I'm afraid. Why? What happened? My company insured her jewels for $50,000. Yes? They were stolen. Or rather, maybe I should say they uh, disappeared two days ago. Oh, that's a shame. All that beautiful stuff. Gosh. Certainly is too bad, but uh, why are you telling us about it? You're a friend of Mrs. Haley's, Roy. She and her husband have filed a claim with us. We're not going to pay it without a thorough investigation. Why not? We think she's trying to defraud us. We think she stole the jewels herself. be mistaken, Jack. What reason would Janet have? Well, we're not sure, Dale. But Janet's background isn't too open and above board. I hate to say anything bad about a person who's a friend of yours. But frankly, in checking her out, we can't find any record of her until a little over ten years ago. Really? This leads us to believe that she may have changed her name about that time, assumed a new identity. If that's true, then why did she do it? It could only be because she's trying to hide something that happened. Something she doesn't want her husband or the world to know about. I see. I thought that as a friend, you might be able to obtain information that would be more difficult for me or the police. We also don't wish to do anything that might scare her unduly. If she did take her own jewels, we don't want her skipping the country with them. Jack, I'd almost stake my life on Janet Haley's honesty. But as long as you and the police think that she might have something to hide, and because of it, she took the jewels... I'll go out and have a talk with her. Maybe I can turn up something that will clear her of your suspicion. <laughs> Did you ever hear something like racket? Well, Janet and her husband are very fond of animals and birds. Oh, they must be. Birds, parrots, dogs, cats. What else could they put out there in that there solunium? Or, uh, solonium. Solarium, Pat. Well, there's Peppy. Peppy? Yeah, Janet's pet monkey. Hmm, I don't see him. Well, maybe he's upstairs with Janet and David. He could be. Hey, here they come now. Roy, Pat, it's so nice of you to come over. Nice to see you, Howdy. Janet. Oh, now, Peppy, stop it. Come on, now, I'll put you outside. Come on. <laughs> into the living room where it isn't so noisy. Okay. Sit down, Roy. Dale, Pat. Oh, I can't begin to tell you how grateful I am for your interest in this jewel theft. Janet, when a friend of ours is in trouble, we try to do everything we can trouble? for her. Well, I don't think I understand. I didn't tell her about Jack's suspicions, Roy. Suspicions? Mr. Kelly, about what? Well, frankly, Janet, the insurance company thinks you took the jewels yourself. I t well, That's fantastic. Why would I? Well, that's what we tried to tell Jack. Anyway, if we can find out what really happened to the jewels, you'll be cleared, and 
That's all that matters. Roy, those jewels mean more to me than... I don't know how to tell you, but... The money doesn't mean anything. The jewels do. We believe you, Janet. Roy's only trying to help you. I know. Janet, will you tell me exactly what happened when you first noticed that the jewels were gone? Well, it was last Thursday. I, I cleaned the pieces as I always do each month. I wiped them off with alcohol and put them on the bed to dry. Where did you clean them? In the bathroom. I see. Then you took them into the bedroom? Yes. Yeah. What did you do after that? Well, it seems to me... Oh, yes, I remember now. I went downstairs and started to do some cleaning. And about half an hour later, I went back upstairs, and the jewels weren't there. About what time was this? Oh, it must have been about 12.30, because I called my husband, and he was out to lunch, and he called me back around 1 and told me to call the police and the insurance company. And you were here all by yourself at that time? Yes. Well, there was Mrs. Carson, of course. Your cook? Yes, she was in the kitchen. All the time? Well, I suppose so. Oh, Roy, you surely don't suspect Mrs. Carson. No, but I do. What? Now, Pat, Janet, I don't suspect anybody yet. I'm just trying to get as much information as I can. Tell me one more thing. Did anybody else come into the house while you were downstairs? No, I... Oh, wait a minute. Yes. There was a delivery boy from the grocery. What part of the house was he in? Well, the kitchen, of course. Hmm. All right. Suppose we talk to your cook about what she was doing and how long the delivery boy was around. This is Roy Rogers, Dale Evans, and Pat Brady. How do you do? Mr. Howdy. Rogers is trying to find out what happened to my jewelry. I wonder if you'd answer a few questions, Mrs. Carson. Be glad to. But I already told the police everything I know. It isn't much. Well, uh, about this boy who delivered the grocery order. What did he do, and how long did he stay? Oh, he didn't do anything. Except put the groceries on the table, as usual. Couldn't have been here more than a couple of minutes. Did he leave through the back door? Of course. Was there any opportunity for him to have slipped back in when you weren't looking? Well, I don't see how. But... Just one more question. With the exception of the grocery boy, no one else came to the house that morning, huh? Not that I know of. Of course, like I say, I was busy. Mrs. Haley was in the front part of the house. She'd know if the doorbell rang or anybody else came. Janet? Uh, no. No, nobody else was here, Roy. Not a soul. <laughs> Excuse me, please. Yes? Why, Mr. Rogers! You are Roy Rogers, aren't you? Yes, ma'am. Do you have a delivery boy working here by the name of Henry Porter? Why, yes. That's Henry, over there, arranging the shelves. Well, thank you. Come on, Dale. Pat. Hi, Henry. Huh? Uh, I'd like to have a talk with you. I'm Roy Rogers. Roy Rogers? Gee, what happened? I win a contest or something? No, Henry, I'm afraid not. It's about the delivery you made to the Haley residence two days ago. How long were you there? How long? Oh, about two, three minutes. Why? Did you go into any part of the house except the kitchen? No. No, of course not. Why? Well, just answer my question. Uh, when you left the house, did you see anyone outside? Anyone at all? No. Well, I saw Joe. Joe? Yeah, Joe Sanders. He's a messenger boy for Western Union. Where did you see Joe? Near the malt shop. We, we had ice cream together. Oh? You mean you didn't see Joe near the Haley residence? No. He had a head start on me. He was at the Haley house before I got there, but he was... What? Out. You mean the messenger boy, Joe, told you he'd been at the Haley place the same morning? Sure. Mrs. Haley called for a messenger boy, so he went up to get a package. Package? Yeah. What did Mrs. Haley tell Joe to do with this package? Mail it. Hey, why all the questions, Mr. Rogers? Did Joe do something wrong? Not Joe, Henry. Not Joe. Now, Joe, there's nothing to be nervous about. We just want to ask you a few questions. Okay, Mr. Rogers. Henry told us that you picked up a package at the Haley residence a couple of days ago. Yeah, that's right. And Mrs. Haley asked you to mail it for her. Yes, ma'am. Did anything unusual happen the morning you picked up the package? I mean, did you see anyone else hanging around the house? Did Mrs. Haley seem nervous or excited? No, sir. I didn't see anybody around. 
Mrs. Haley just gave me the box as usual and told me to be sure and register it and get a return receipt. Well, just a minute. What do you mean she gave you a box as usual? Well, she's been calling for a messenger almost every month lately. And it's always the same. She gives me a box and I take her to the post office. And... Uh, how do you know it's a box? Well, it, it's wrapped like a box and... Well, it looks like a box, you know, about this long and this wide. I and see. And she told you to have it registered? Yes, ma'am, with a return receipt. Hmm. Now, Joe, this is very important. Do you happen to remember the name of the person the box was addressed to? No, sir. Well, how about the city? The place it was going? Oh, yeah, yeah, I, I remember that. I used to live there, Oklahoma City. One more thing, Joe. Did you go back and give the registration slip to Mrs. Haley? Oh, yes, sir. When? Well, that same day in the afternoon. I see. Okay, Joe. Thanks. Thanks a lot. You can go now. Yes, sir. Dale, I hate to think that Janet Haley has done something wrong, but the fact of the matter is, she lied to us when she said that no one but the grocery boy came to the house that morning. I think we'd better notify Jack Kelly and tell him what we've learned. Better go in here, Roy, where it's quieter. That might be a good idea. <laughs> Sit down, Roy. Thanks. Where's Dale? She and Pat are checking up on a few things for me. Oh. Well, you said on the phone that you had something to tell me. Yes, Janet, I have. Have you found out something about my jewels? No, but I found out something about you. Me? You lied to me, Janet. Lied? Now, please don't make it worse by trying to deny it. I... I talked to Joe. Joe? Yes, the messenger boy you gave the package to. Oh. Oh, I see. But that... That wasn't my jewelry. What was it? I... I can't tell you. You must tell me, Janet. If you can't give me a satisfactory explanation why you mailed a package that looked like a box large enough to contain your jewels on the morning you reported the theft, then I'll have no choice except to tell the insurance company about it. They'll refuse to pay the claim. They'll notify the police. Your husband will... No, no, no. My husband mustn't know anything about this. But he's bound to know. How are you going to keep it from him? Roy. Oh, Roy. I'm sorry, Janet. Why not tell me the whole story? I can't. I can't. I can tell you one thing, Roy. If my husband finds out about me, I swear to you I'll kill myself. <laughs> Okay, okay, Bud. Good boy. Hey, where's Dale? Roy, I'm glad you're back. What did Janet have to say? Nothing. She refused to tell me what was in the package. Things look pretty bad for her right now. Did you get the information from Jack? Yes, I did. The package was sent to Mr. Peter DeLancey, 1215 Claflin Avenue, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Mm. Jack has notified the Oklahoma City police. They're checking up on Mr. DeLancey now. Hey, Roy. Dale? Yes, Pat. What is it? Jack Kelly just called again. He said to tell you that... Let's see, uh, just a second. I got, I got it written down here. Uh, Pete DeLancey, well-known fence in Oklahoma City. Hmm, that can't be right. It's right, Pat. But a fence is a wall around a yard, not a person. A fence is a man who handles stolen jewels, Pat. Go on. Oh, oh, yeah, well. Uh, Pete DeLancey, well-known fence. Uh, connected with blackmail and vice in general has been picked up and is being held for questioning. And Jack wants to see you right away, Roy. Well, I don't doubt it. Dale. Yes? Janet threatened to kill herself. Kill herself? Yes, she's terribly frightened and worried. But in spite of everything we found out, I don't think she took the jewels. Oh? Why? She's not a thief. She's in trouble, big trouble. But she's not a thief. We've got to find out what she's trying to hide. And you know what? What? This is a job for you. you wanted to see me about something personal and private. Yes, Janet. Roy told me that you threatened to kill yourself if certain information is disclosed to your husband. Dale, I... Wait, let me finish. 
Janet, you must tell me about the package you sent to Oklahoma City. I'm sorry, Dale, I can't. But you've got to. Janet, Roy told me that if it doesn't have any bearing on the jewels disappearing, he'll do all he can to see that what you say here will never go any further. Now, please, Janet, tell me just what was in the package you sent to Peter DeLancey. Money. Money? $480 in small old bills. Who is Peter DeLancey, Janet? I... I met him when I was 19. I guess I fell in love with him. He was an accountant. I went to business school and studied bookkeeping so I could get a job and work in the same office with him. Now that I look back, I know I must have made a fool of myself. I, I practically threw myself at him. One day, there was an investigation of the books. Mine were all wrong. Peter had given me false entries to make. I, I didn't know they were false, Dale. I swear I didn't. Go on, dear. We, we were both sentenced to prison. When I got out, I came here to Los Angeles and changed my name and found a job working for Bill. After I'd been there a few months, he promoted me to being his secretary. A year later, we were married. And you never told him about your past? No. I just couldn't take a chance of losing the only happiness I've ever known. At least I was happy until a few months ago. What happened? I was downtown in Los Angeles doing some shopping. I was walking up 6th Street. I guess I must have been window shopping or daydreaming. I, I bumped into someone... It was Peter DeLancey. He was out here on a trip. Yeah, I see. You found out you were married to a wealthy man, and he started to blackmail you. Yes. But how did you raise the money without your husband knowing about oh, it? Bill's always been so generous. By, by saving on my household allowance and denying myself little luxuries, I, I managed to send Pete enough to keep him quiet. But what about the jewelry, Janet? I don't know what happened to it, Dale. I swear I don't. And you swear that the box you mailed to him contained another payoff in money, not your jewel? I swear it by everything that's holy, Dale. I swear it. What are they doing up there, Roy? Talking. Oh, they sure must have a lot to talk about. They've been up there for an hour. I know. Pat, will you please put those keys down? You're making me nervous. Oh, sorry. Oh, say. Yeah? Have you got Jack Kelly's phone number handy? Yeah, I think so. Got it written down here in my pocket. Okay. Just a second while I... Ruth! <laughs> Pick them up and put them back on the table, Pat. Please get me Jack's number. Okay. Let's see now. You got it someplace here. It's all right, Janet. I'm sure Roy will understand, and I'm sure he'll believe you just as I do. <laughs> Well, Dale, did you and Janet have a good talk? We sure did, Roy. But I'm afraid you're no nearer to finding out what happened to the jewels than you were before. Oh? I'll tell you all about it when we get back to the ranch. Don't worry, Janet. I'm sure the jewels will turn up someplace. I hope so, Dale. And thanks for being so understanding. Well, are you ready, Roy? Pat? I guess so. Sorry I haven't been more help, Janet. Oh, you've both been wonderful. I, I feel much better now that I've been able to confide in Dale. Oh, Good. Let's go, Pat. Okay, just a minute while I get the keys to the car off the... Hey, Roy. The keys. They ain't on the table. Oh, they must be, Pat. I saw you put them there myself. But they ain't. Hey, look. <laughs> the monkey's got them. Oh, Pat, you little devil. Come back here. No, let him go, Janet. Let's follow him. He's going into the living room. Come on, hurry. Roy, he dropped the keys in that big vase by the fireplace. Yeah, let's have a look. Let's see what's inside. Hey, this thing's heavy. What? Well, what? Well, 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 look at you. Oh, my jewels. Roy, all my jewels are there. Yeah, in mirrors, compact, tinfoil, the car keys. <laughs> well, Janet, I guess we can call Jack Kelly and tell him to stop worrying about the $50,000. Oh, I'm so glad. Dale... Yes, dear. Will you have to tell him about, about anything else? No, dear. I'm sure we won't. And, folks, that's the story of a day that started off bad and turned out to be a real good day. Yes, it's a 
good day for singing a song, and it's a good day for moving along. Yes, it's a good day. How could anything go wrong? A good day from morning till night. Yes, it's a good day for shining your shoes, and it's a good day for losing the blues. Everything to gain and nothing to lose, cause it's a good day from morning till night. I said to the sun, good morning, sun, rise and shine today. You know you've got to get going if you're going to make a showing, and you know you've got the right of way, cause it's a good day for paying your bills, and it's a good day for curing your ills, so take a deep breath. And throw away your pills, cause it's a good day from morning till night. Yes, it's a good day for singing a song, and it's a good day for moving along. Yes, it's a good day, how could anything go wrong? A good day from morning till night. Yes, it's a good day for shining your shoes, and it's a good day for losing the blues. Nothing to lose Cause it's a good day From morning till night I said to the sun Good morning, sun Rise and shine today You know you gotta get going If you're gonna make a showing And you know you got the right of way Cause it's a good day For paying your bills A good day For curing your ills So take a deep breath And throw away your pills Cause it's a good day from morning till night Yes, it's a good day For shining your shoes And it's a good day For losing the blues Everything to gain And nothing to lose Cause it's a good day From morning till night I said to the sun, good morning, sun, rise and shine today. You know you've got to get going if you're going to make a showing, and you know you've got the right of way. Well, it's a good day for paying your bills, and it's a good day for curing your ribs. So take a deep breath and throw away your bills, because it's a good day. That's all for now, folks. This is Roy Rogers saying to all of you, from all of us, goodbye, good luck, and may the good Lord take a liking to you. See you next week. Show is presented each week at this time through the facilities of the United States.